you take the ring and place it on the whole finger and say after me. Gans an bizoma. Gans an bizoma. Mi af timeth. Mi af timeth. Gans au horf. Gans au horf. Mi af gorf. Mi af gorf. How many hours of wedding uh, videos have you watched to put this collection together? So many, so many brides <laughs> and grooms and so much confetti. I see it when I close my eyes. Are yeah. you a cynic about marriage now? No, I'm, I'm not actually. It's, it's, there's something quite lovely about watching all these wedding films and not knowing really what happened to people, especially the wartime weddings are really, really poignant. But um, the weddings of, of kind of more famous people or familiar figures like the royal family, obviously, you do know, but a lot of this collection is just home movies of people. It's just lovely to see, really. And I guess you're caught in a perpetual loop of people's happiest days of their lives, which must be really interesting. It is. <laughs> it is. And, um, th- and that is the thing about it. It's such a key area for home movies. It's such a natural subject for amateur filmmakers. And that's kind of in any family that would be when the home movie camera comes out. Can you give us an idea of some of the highlights of things that you've been watching? Are there any particularly unusual weddings that you can mention? They they kind of break down into different categories. There's the there's the royal newsreels um, from the 1910s and 20s. Those are quite interesting just because the kind of the fascination around royal weddings starts then. So it's been going on for nearly a century now. There's one. It's the Duke of York and actually the Queen Mother. Well, it was King George the sixth in 1923 and that one uh, we have a note about that that was shot by 19 cameramen which is like that's a really big media event for the time obviously it doesn't really compare to what happens now but it's interesting to note that we've got a good one from 1922 called princess mary's thought which is um the princess royal getting married in 1922 and it's a really it's just a speculative newsreel about what dresses people might wear to the wedding it's really, it's like a lifestyle bit that you'd see on morning TV now. It's like, well, maybe people would be wearing this type of dress. It's just, it's quite a nice little fashion bit that isn't really related to reporting the wedding, actually. It's just about styles. We have the royal wedding from 1947, which is the Queen and Prince Philip, which will be really familiar to any viewers of The Crown. It features highly in the first episode of The Crown. So it's interesting to look at that one and compare. On the home movie front... We have, um, we have a really lovely one called Let's Dream from the Northeast Film Archive from 1949. And in that, a couple are, they're imagining their wedding. It's shot as though they're reading an annual of Hollywood film stars and they sort of start to imagine their wedding and then it cuts forward into their actual wedding. It's just wow. the style of it is really great. Yeah, yeah. arty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, innovative. <laughs> Having grown up here, when your father suggested that he ought to arrange your marriage rather than you make your own choice. Did that not jar at all? Initially it did, because of course I've been used to more of English way of life than Eastern way of life. But um, my father said that uh, he told me what kind of girl I would prefer and I told him what kind of he girl... He told you what yeah, kind of girl you would prefer? Yeah, and I said that she must be sensible and intelligent, must be able to look after the house and uh, be of a good character. There's a a wide range of people in them as well. I I kind of naively went into it thinking we would just see white, middle or upper class families getting married. And But then as particularly as we go through the years, you start to see quite a, a wide diversity of communities that are engaging in wedding. And the wedding videos don't seem to change that much between them either. There seems to be a very kind of set standard as to how you shoot that kind of day, no matter what culture you're from. There is a set kind of aesthetic around the films, definitely, which is the kind of arrivals and then not necessarily capturing the ceremony whatever the ceremony may be and then the exit and sometimes cake and dancing and and all of those things are quite a common feature um, of the films but as you say the the collection really does show the kind of cultural diversity across Britain there's all sorts of of different kinds of weddings we've got a Sikh wedding in Exeter in 1971 unfortunately that one is in black and white because it was shot for local news we have um, there's a couple of uh, Nigerian students getting married in Cornwall in, I think that's 1964-65. Now the elephant in the room is Harry and Meghan's wedding coming up, obviously. I was wondering how, how we consume weddings and, and footage of weddings in the modern era. I mean, obviously this is outside of the scope of the collection you've put together, but how do you think uh, social media and the internet changes how we look at these massive spectacles? I think... 
yeah, it's an interesting one. These these types of films where where it's a kind of amateur filmmaker in the family kind of shooting on a, on a family's home movie camera has, I think, something in common or is related to how we shoot material now on our phones, for instance, now that we have that capability. is that kind of raw footage that you get in the moment that you don't necessarily edit a lot of that. Um, but I think probably how we how we present weddings now is a little bit more filtered or considered. It's just that it's the change in technology and the accessibility of capturing the moving image. And I don't know if people are more inclined to share photos now rather than moving images of the day. It it maybe just feels that way. Mm. Yeah. It, it feels to me as well that people are much more conscious of their image and how they present that to other people now, and that. I think people are capturing things now in order to present them to other people, whereas a vi- wedding video before might have been just for the close community. Now it's for the much, much wider That's audience. definitely true. A lot of these films would have been shot by family members for viewing by family members at home. And there's some local news stories in there, which again, you know, just would have been on the local news. And there's definitely a, a key difference in that and tweeting out pictures of your wedding for the world to see. What what's the BFI's responsibility when it comes to a big event like Harry and Meghan's wedding that's coming up? I mean, how will we look after footage that's captured of that event, seeing as there's going to be so much of it and so many different takes on it? I imagine. I'm I'm glad you asked that actually, because um, one of my primary roles is a television curator, and so we um, we record seventeen channels, uh, the preview channels in in the UK. So we will be recording all of the coverage from those channels for the BFI National Archive and preserving that for the future. It's enough to drive a Republican like me mad. <laughs> <laughs> The most notable event which took place in the time this scrapbook covers was the wedding of Lady Diana and Prince Charles. The national papers had a field day during the run-up period. Although there were a number of street parties which showed the patriotism of the residents and expressed a sense of occasion for the day, it seems that the majority sat glued to the television and Harrow's streets were remarkably empty. In the High Court of Happiness from 1927, that's a topical budget newsreel, which is about a tradition of, it's a competition to find the happiest married couple and then they win a side of bacon. (laughs) I think that's in Ilford. And that's a tradition that still goes on. I think it's every leap year. Right. We could all lie quite happily for that side of bacon. (laughs) To win the bacon. (laughs) 